Yo, what's happening? This okay. This is always a great. You know, things should start with yo. And no matter oh, what the show is, you have to start it with yo. What's happening? Um, you should bring out what's happening for him. Yeah, what's happening for him? That kind of sounds cool, mm. but yo, yeah. it's like friendly. You know, you can, you know, come into my house, put your feet up, listen to my tale. Welcome. I don't know why I said all that. Creepy old crypt episode. This is the second episode ever. Second one, uh, we're going as far from pirates as possible. I don't think you can get much farther than this. And again, just to preface, this show is about, you know, creepy old crypt. It's the perfect title. It is the perfect title. That's it. Nothing nothing else needs to be said. <laughs> show where we dust off kind of old, weird Disney stuff. Talk about it. Yeah. Uh, last week, we talked about, or last week, last month, <laughs> We yesterday. talked about yesterday, a minute ago, we talked about Pirates of the Caribbean, classic Disney attraction. This month, we're going to go as far from Pirates as possible. From the depths of the sea, what's the furthest thing? Yep. Can't see my finger. <laughs> Space. Look up. up there. Look up. Yep. Look up at the sky. Turn that into a meme. Anyway, uh, yeah, Star Tours is what we're going to talk about today. The classic attraction... It was the first time... Wait, was it the first time? Yeah, I think it was. Well, no, I was going to say the first time Lucasfilm yeah. Oh, yeah. teamed up with Disney did I don't know a, which did a collaboration. Like, it was Captain EO and this, and I don't yeah, know. It was those very, were, very close. Those Actually, EO might have been first. Yeah, they were both like, what, 86? Uh, I think... I th- I want to say... I want to say Star Tours is 87. By the way, yeah. want to reiterate this month, this is a such a conversational show that... A lot of the facts may be total BS. Yep. We're so just off, we're not, off the top of our heads and yes. we're typically wrong. Yes, so just be prepared for wrong things being said. But I believe Star Tours is 87, EO was 86. Yeah. Uh, but still, back-to-back collaborations with George Lucas. Um, I saw a press conference, you know, because it's funny, because he's friends with Spielberg. Yeah. And Spielberg did his thing, you know, all his stuff was at Universal. So you had Jaws over Universal. Jurassic you had Park. E, uh, not e, yet. E.T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Later, Jurassic Park. Yeah. But it's funny, George, there's a there's a press conference on um, on YouTube that you could watch from, from 86, 87, mm-hmm. where George Lucas says, uh, Disneyland is the Rolls Royce of theme parks. Ooh. So that's who I wanted to, yeah. to team up with. And uh, I couldn't agree more. I, I like, I like there, you know, there are other theme parks that are fun. There are other theme parks that have cool stuff but Disneyland is you know what I mean it's like the keep coming back yeah it's like that's that's got an extra layer of prestige mm. you know you got a theme park ride but you got one at Disneyland you know so I think that's why George Lucas was all over it I think George Lucas had this affinity for like he always wanted to make like exciting stuff for young people yeah. you know what I mean because even Star Wars started out that way Star Wars was meant to be you know he really saw it as like the ultimate vehicle for mm. like I mean, all ages can enjoy it, but, like, it was really for, like, you're 12 and you're just kind of discovering the yeah. world kind of thing. And I think that was always been a... St- you know, again, I've, I've said this before, but when you look at his stuff through the 80s and whatever, um, you know, post-Star Wars, he was executive producing, but really had a hand in making all these things like Willow and and Labyrinth and uh, even Howard the Duck. And they're all things that would have, like, weird little creatures in it. Like, he just kind of wanted to make otherworldly yeah. little cute things for yeah. kids kind of and uh, so that's why I, I think it's just funny that you know no one saw that coming when episode 1 came out in, in Star Wars episode 1 came out in 99 mm. is everyone's picturing oh it's going to be like the original Star Wars so oh, it's got to be in that line and then you got this movie with cute little creatures in it like that's <laughs> all George Lucas wants to do it's really weird yeah. but that's why I think he's so you know Disneyland has always been something of particular appeal to him yeah that's just my theory on that. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so yeah, Star Tours was a ride that came out of all that. Before we get to the main we subject, addendum. we should, I think what we'll do is probably start each of these things. By the way, we're recording this, we should preface, we're in Tomorrowland yeah. uh, right now. It's funny because you always hear a lot of futuristic music playing in the back, you know, and I thought, oh, they'll hear that, you know, in the background mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But right now I hear like jazz coming from over there. I don't, yeah, know, I don't know why no that's happening. Playing. There's a stage yeah. over here that's band wonder, stuff you should play on. There's yeah, nothing tonight. I wonder if a band will start up during the middle of yeah, this. Hopefully. We'll 
will end on a cool like <laughs> musical tribute. Yeah. But anyway, we're filming this in Tomorrowland. We're right by the. We're in between. We're right, Terrace. Yeah, and we're we're right by where the Carousel of Progress used to be. Rest in peace. Mm. I also liked America Sings when I was a kid. But anyway, uh, maybe every month we'll start the episode with kind of like an addendum kind of thing, or like stuff that we didn't get to we last forgot. time. Yeah, stuff we forgot, stuff yeah. we screwed up, whatever. Yep. Uh, I want to say first of all to correct a major screw up from the Pirates of the Caribbean episode. Uh, I said, yeah, I think Disneyland in California is the only one that has a ride inside, or that, sorry, that has a, a restaurant, restaurant inside yeah. the ride. That, I was so wrong. I totally forgot that there is a Blue Bayou in Japan, I believe, yeah. I think. And then I think it's the Blue Lagoon restaurant in Paris. Yes. And I'm hearing rumors, I'm hearing rumors right now that it might, I don't know if this is bogus or what, but that it might, the one in Paris has been closed. Because they're renovating the ride, and I think they're adding Jack Sparrow. There's a rumor it might open back up as the Jack Sparrow restaurant, <laughs> like a Jack Sparrow themed restaurant. Are they gonna serve just rum? That's it? No, they're gonna no. You know what? It'll be on the menu, and they're gonna say sorry, all gone. Oh. <laughs> it's gonna be really bad um, eggs. That's it. Yeah, really bad really, eggs and that, rum. That should be on the menu. Really bad eggs. Yeah. Is there any other food reference in that song? Uh, burgers. I don't know. Burgers, and yeah. then the description, uh, love by love by our yeah. mommies and dads. Yep. Anyway, uh, so those exist. We didn't even talk about that. <laughs> uh, so, what we're going to actually talk about, too, is uh, we wanted to add to that. Something I, I'm bummed out we didn't talk about this last time. Yeah. Uh, the, all the skeletons and stuff in Pirates, we kind of glossed past that. But it's funny, when we posted this, and people hadn't even watched, when, when we, people hadn't even watched through the last episode... Mm-hmm all the way and they, I was getting emails like and comments like you better talk about the skeletons how there used to be real skeletons we didn't even cover that no. so I just wanted to say yes at some point there were uh, real skeletons yeah. in weren't they cheaper than making them yes I believe yeah. so to make them look good yeah to make them look good yeah it was cheaper to get real ones they borrowed I, I want I, again I'm I'm pretty sure this is accurate but if I'm wrong sue me but they uh, they bar they were like cadaver yeah. or something like they were skeletons from a medical facility at a college or mm. something like that and they used it until like health inspectors were yeah. like uh, no you got to get rid of that you but can't have real bones everywhere yeah it's probably not a good idea yeah. but I've heard that I don't know if it's true the skull above the headboard of the pirate that's like sleeping in bed yeah, was got the magnifying that magnifying glass yeah. I'm hearing that's still a real skull. That's the only remnant left. I think so. Yeah. That's a legit human skull. Can you imagine that you died and that's where your skull ended up? (laughs) On the top of a bed. Like, wow. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. So uh, uh, those were kind of the main things within the ride. But you had something, you had had a story story that you were were kicking yourself. So bummed I didn't tell. Yeah. What was that all about? Well, this has to do with, it's not even in the ride. Yeah. This has to do with the line. Uh, the line can get pretty long sometimes, and uh, one time we were in line, and around it kind of corkscrews around in two yeah. sides, and we went on the the right side. Yeah. And there are trash cans right as you like, at, at, right as you get like kind of where you start yeah. going up into the door, and we got up to there, and there is just a little kid pressed up against the trash can, <laughs> pissing. <laughs> Like, like cornered into the like the wall and the trash can, so there's like a corner. He's just in that corner, pissing, yeah. and you can see the puddle go under the from under the trash can out into like the the, oh, the no, line area. No, no, and, no. And um, yeah, the mom just like, oh, you need to go to the bathroom. Here you go, right here. Oh, and dear it was God. just this corner of like between oh, the trash can and the wall, sucks. and you could not believe it. It's like, oh, yeah, man. I'm sorry you're in the line, but yeah. there are bathrooms literally everywhere. You oh. can just take it like. Un- Man, unnecessary. That is unnecessary. Yeah. You know, we have another great bathroom story, well, or, or lack thereof. <laughs> Don't but, tell it to see But we should bathroom. save it. We should save it for when we do a eventual like other Tomorrowland yes. episode. Yes. This one's about Star Tours. Yeah. Wasn't uh, it wasn't involving Star Tours? Was it? No. I don't think so. I think it was Space Mountain, wasn't it? Yes. I think so. Okay, yes, we'll save definitely. it for that episode. I know exactly what you're talking So about. everyone out there look forward to a great yeah. bathroom story connected yep. to Space Mountain. Space Mountain. Yeah. It, it wasn't a. It was a mountain. It wasn't Space Mountain that day. It was a mountain of something. <laughs> anyway, so we'll talk about it another day. Yeah. But anyway, was that pretty much it? From that other, was pretty from much all stuff? I can think of. Yeah. That's it. That's all I can think of. Yeah. If I think of something else. I'll blurt it out. 
anyway, back to Star Tours. So Star Tours, um, so let's maybe go back to the beginning mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, Star Tours is basically, uh, again, opened up in, uh, again, I want to say around 87. Yeah. Um, now, I have a memory of this, and you said you didn't. I, but don't, I don't have any, a memory of anything beyond, like, that. Yeah. yeah. When, when was the earliest you went to Disneyland? I mean, uh, how old do you think you were? Probably early 90s. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I, didn't, I, don't, I, I, was pr I probably went before I could remember. Yeah. And, but when I remember, it was, like, early to mid-90s. Yeah. I think I went, I think I went... I went fairly early, I mean, eh, mid-80s. Yeah. I remember going in the 80s, and then not again until, like, 95. Yeah. I went a few times in the in the 90s. Because I remember being here for the opening Indiana yeah. Jones. I remember seeing when uh, they, were, they broke ground on Toontown. And yeah, it was all dirt. yeah. I remember all of that. Um, but, yeah. yeah, beyond that, I, I don't remember. Yeah. Well, um, I have memories of my... I have, that's one thing I'm lucky to have, is a, I have a pretty good memory for yeah. useless information. And uh, I do actually remember a lot of things from the 80s um, when we went there. And uh, so I actually have memories of the original ride that was in that spot. Before it was Star Tours in Tomorrowland, there was a ride called Adventures Through Inner Space, mm -hmm. which I think to, to this day is still my favorite, like, miss, like dead attraction, yeah. like, like gone thing. And uh, it was a ride where, if you never heard of it, it was a ride where they shrank, where... Uh, a guy was narrating the whole thing about how he's going to be shrunk. Yeah, you go through a microscope. To, yeah, you go through a microscope mm -hmm. uh, that it um, shrinks you down, and you're looking at like things on a molecular level. Yeah. So you'd go through and you'd see like water molecules, and you'd see all this stuff. But I have a distinct memory of I have a distinct memory of actually uh, going through it. And I remember sitting in <laughs> they. The narrator is basically telling you all the stuff on the ride yeah. because they did not have the technology to show it. No. So dark. for tons of that ride, you'd sit in dark, total darkness, yeah. and a narrator would be going, "Oh, I feel myself even getting smaller. Yeah, and and even smaller now. Yeah, mm. well, I, I yeah. can't believe how much." Of course, the narrator sounds a lot better than that. But um, I think it was Paul Freeze is the narrator. Uh, You're thinking of Paul Feig. Uh, no. Yeah, I thought, no. I'm pretty sure. It was yeah. That. <laughs> But uh, anyway, uh, but anyway, he's narrating it, and he's just telling you a lot of the stuff. Yeah. But you'd see some of it. There'd be like spinning stuff and a strobing thing, you there know, whatever. The eye? Wouldn't you see the eye that, in the microscope? That was my memory. One of my first memories of Disneyland ever is I remember being creeped out by this gi this giant eye mm. looking at you, and it was because it was meant to make it seem like you were under the microscope and some yeah. a real person looking back through it from out the tray. Yes. Like so that was really cool seeing uh, that. I remember that. That was one of those moments that it felt like bigger than life. Like, whoa, there's a giant eye. Like, that I, That wigged me out. Yeah. That was really crazy to me. But anyway, I remember looking at that eye. And it's funny. Um, my favorite, my two favorite facts about that ride. I know we're not talking about that this week, mm. month. But um, but my favorite things about that, that ride were, uh, one... That because it was just long stretches of darkness, the worst stuff happened on that ride. Yeah. Like, it was like, that was the ride for, like, drugs and sex. Like, that was where you did it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I can't vouch for that. I wasn't there for any of that. I was a kid. But that was, a, I heard, a big reason why they wanted to get rid of it. Was it was just like, yeah, we're just inviting trouble. Like, yeah. people are in, in, yeah. in the dark it's for a, a long time. It's just a dark, dark ride through yeah. the whole thing. So, uh, that, but my favorite story about it was, I, I don't remember which Imagineer, but some Imagineer who worked on the park said that there was one day, so when you, you'd wait in line for it, and the line was a lot like the Star Tours it, yeah, the line is now. The, the first queue. part of the line is pretty much the same layout, except yeah. the microscope is now a star speed. Yeah, instead of a star speed, exactly. Yeah. There was a giant microscope there. But they had a little tube that they had miniature people on miniature vehicles coming out of the microscope and going into the ride and it was supposed to be like oh it looks like everyone's going in and they're shrinking them and they're coming yeah. out it was just an effect obviously they're little toys in vehicles going past but it looks like oh they're shrinking people yeah. and some imagineer maybe it was tony baxter maybe it was bob girl i don't remember who but they said they saw a woman standing there and she's looking at the tube full of these little dolls going by and she's going and the guy's like, oh, having fun? Like, what are you doing? And she was like, my son said he would wave to me when he came through this part of the ride, and I've been waiting half an hour, and he hasn't. 
And he just thought to himself, he's like, man, this is a trick. Like, that's yeah, not... but it worked. Like, what? Yeah. But he thought, but that Imagineer was like, oh my God, this woman's son probably got off the ride half an hour ago. <laughs> and it became like a lost a lost situation, yeah. like a lost child. And they had to find it. Like, that was like, come on. Like, anyway, uh, that always made me laugh. Hopefully yeah. they found that kid. Probably not. Still uh, looking at it. Yeah, to this day, yeah. a gro- grown man walking around mm. like, Mom, come on. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, so I remember that ride. That's one of my favorite m- extinct attractions, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, what was cool was the people mover. I miss the people mover. Yeah. I really do. The track's still there. It's all still the there. The track is all still here, and it's not running. Um, but, you know, in case, again, in case you don't know, people mover was a concept vehicle Walt Disney had put in, in, in Disneyland yeah. that was meant to just get people from here to there. And basically, it was in Disneyland as a concept for something, uh, you know, Walt Disney wanted to build, like, futuristic cities. Yeah. He wanted to build a Progress City USA or whatever, you know, name it went under. Uh, and that's what Epcot was going to be, was a future, a, a experiment, mm. experimental prototype city of tomorrow. And, uh, and instead of just driving a car or walking you know yeah. people movers to take you to here to here to here to here or you have monorails to go longer distances you know he had everything figured out for mass transit and and basically their pitch to the bank was you know hey if you want to know how good the people mover works we got one in disneyland it's here um and so they built it here and it would go in and out of rides and you could see all the different go through in yeah. and out of attractions shops whatever and it was really cool because it would go past the rim of the 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 Adventures through inner space it would mm-hmm. pass through. So if you were on that, you could go. You would go through inner space. You'd see people down there. It was pretty cool. But I remember, um, I can hear Star Wars music now. The jazz has parted ways. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so I remember when they started hyping up. Okay, Star Tours is going to start. Is is coming? It's on the way. Mm-hmm. And they were about to replace inner space. They added. Uh, I think it was C three PO and R two D two would talk over the speaker like when during that, that during that part of the people mover. They would come over the speaker like, oh, I'm so excited for you to join us on Star <laughs> Tours. And uh, if I recall correctly, people out there, maybe you remember, or I don't know, but I think there were stormtroopers up there. Like, they added them to the dark corridors. Like, on that, the, that you go by? Yeah, the people mm-hmm. mover, you'd go past inner space and there'd be stormtroopers up there. I feel like when I was a kid, I was terrified by that. Really? Because like, they were like stormtroopers. I, I hadn't seen Star Wars at yeah. that point. So there were troopers hiding in the darkness with guns. That just seemed, like, weird to me. Mm. But anyway. Uh, but eventually it closed and became Star Tours. So now we can actually talk about Star Tours. <laughs> uh, so Star Tours. Uh, did you... Where does Star War, Star Tours place on your list? Like, on list has that always been one of... Is that, on, is that one of your favorite rides? Or has it always been, like, okay It's to you in or? my top ten. Really? Why not in my top five? Okay. Uh... I love it, but yes. again, I didn't see Star Wars until a few years ago. Yeah, like, yeah you really I, didn't. Huh? It, I loved it, but I loved it because it was fun. I didn't love it because, oh, this is a beloved thing I, I yeah. get to experience. Yeah. I, I had never seen Star Wars before yeah. that. So, I, as a kid, I didn't I didn't have any context to it, Yeah, but uh, uh, it was fun. Yeah, I always thought, I always saw pieces of Star Wars as I grew up. Uh, I heard the music. I yeah. thought, that's cool. I had seen Ewoks, and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing Ewoks on a screen when I was yeah. a kid. That's all I remember from Star Wars. Yeah, I remember turning on, like, CBS or something back in the day yeah. and seeing, like, the AT-AT mm. battle or, or the, 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 when they, the, the speeder chase on Endor. Yeah. You know, and I thought, this is cool. But I never had the movies. I never watched them. Mm. And it wasn't until I was in, like, eighth grade that I uh, turned it. I uh, my uh, the special editions were coming out in the theaters. Yeah, and my grandma was like, "I saw at the store that they're selling VHS of these movies, but it says they're not going to be available again. So uh, let's buy that." And I was like, "What are you talking about? Never be available again?" But what I what I didn't know was yeah, it was going to be the the uh, the special editions were going to replace the original cuts forever. Oh yeah, which is still a problem in 2017. But yep. anyway, uh, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Oh, oh. So. Anyway. So that I, I saw them in eighth grade. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, they had a huge effect on me just because uh, they're. I think they're three of the best movies ever made. It, just in terms of, you know, se- these serial. I mean, people out there don't need me to explain why I, why yeah. Star Wars is good. You know, but 
But I just thought it was one of the best adventures committed. Like they, they to me are what movies are about. Mm. Like you can tell compelling dramas and, and serious stories and, and show all this other stuff, but I think the reasons movies were originally made were kind of to take you on an adventure. Yeah. And those movies do it perfect. Like they just take you to places that you've never seen, adventures you never you know, it's it's the ultimate um, adventure, you know. Yeah. And that's why I really like them. Anyway, uh, but uh, Star Tours seemed kind of scary to me when I was a kid uh, because it was just like, what well, does it move around? Like, it's weird because my... It's the unknown. Yeah, it's the unknown. But my parents, you know, they weren't big... Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a roller coaster person. Neither were they. Um, uh, but they were very sensitive to even Star Tours. Like, they were like, oh, that, you know, shakes you around too much. Yeah. I, I'm like not... They, they were kind of like not into it and they always talked like it was kind of like oh watch out for that oh. yeah. so I think that rubbed off on me and that scared me as a kid I was really? scared to go on it and then eventually I did and it was like it kind of rocked me but then I was like alright let's go again yeah you know uh, when I went on it as a kid it, it's anything that was unknown I, yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen so I was super nervous going in but then it's not it's not yeah. really that bad like yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was never affected by it uh, motion-wise, yeah. but it still kind of wigged me out because uh, this is just me. I've said this before to you, but just me personally, I, I have a really gullible brain. So where there, you know, things—that's the thing with me with like rides and stuff. They'll do tricks to make you think something's happening, even though it's not. Yeah. And I know it's not, but like the back of my brain will still go whoa, 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 whoa. No, whoa. But that's what—that's what they did. Like that's yeah. good design. Yeah, like, it's great they design. Trick your brain into thinking you're sure. actually flying all these other places. Yeah, um, but my brain is extra gullible. Where like even when I play a VR game and like a thing flies at my face, I take the helmet off. I'm like, oh no! And it's like Rocco, you know, it's a screen <laughs> strapped to your head. But the back of my brain still kicks in. Yeah. You know, so Star Tours. The I will say the original Star Tours had a thing where it was like it dropped. Remember, brakes, oh. brakes, and it, it would like it was at the very beginning. Yeah, and it, it would go it down, would go straight down. Yeah, that for a second. I had to battle with that part as a kid. That, I, that part scared me. I would, too. Al- yeah. yeah, I would always think, oh no, oh no, we're falling. Wait, Rocco, it's fine. And it's funny because nothing else in the ride would make me feel that way. Yeah. And even and then in the new version, I don't think there's anything on that level either. But for some reason, the drop in the first one, yeah, made me go like, oh, you know, that was weird. Only time that ever happened to me. Yeah. Uh, but we should back up. The theme of the whole ride, of the original ride, mm-hmm. and, and it's hard to believe, but some people watching this probably haven't been on the. Fr- I know some of some yeah. of the people haven't been on the original. Yeah. And the point of it, or the the premise of it was that uh, it was a travel agency basically yeah. star tours it's like it's like you're getting on a flight like, yeah exactly but it's you're a different a flight uh, to take you somewhere in the galaxy yeah. and they did such a good job doing that that, I, that they could have had a really cold and this is what i feel if universal had a star wars ride yeah it would have been cold it would have been you know check it out you're luke skywalker let's go you know through yeah. space but disney <laughs> is so what and i just think it's funny how they can make the mundane of Going like on a flight and yeah. going through security and stuff like that. Yeah, be fun. Like <laughs> yeah, but that's what Disney's good yeah. at is they take they make it they put their own charming twist on yes. it to adapt it and give it that Disney touch and that's what Star Tours did great is it wasn't just reliving Star Wars it's you're you're flying somewhere and that the best part I think and you know I, I like the new ride a lot the new Star Tours a lot oh yeah it's great but I think the best thing that is no longer there was the pilot. They had an animatronic yeah. robot named Rex that the visor would come down. Like, you'd get into this cabin, you'd sit down, and the shield would come down, and he'd go, Hey, I hope this... Um, what would he say exactly? I don't this is your exactly. first flight? Like, well, this is my first... Uh, like, it's something about it being his first flight as well. Yeah, like, this is your first flight, it's mine too. Yeah. Kind of, you know, whatever. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, it's voiced by uh, Paul Rubens. Peter Paul Rubens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which is so good. Yep. And uh, he was just this idiot, you know, this is my first flight, I'm not ready for this, but uh, it should be fine, let's go for it. And then his nervous energy made the whole ride great, because it was like, oh god, you know, we're we're going, oh, wait, this shouldn't be happening. We're not Uh, supposed to be going in here. Yeah, it was perfect design in that it's someone continually telling you that this isn't supposed to happen. Yeah. Like, was that the first ride of its kind that had something like that? Because you go, like, pirates would warn you not to go down here, or or other stuff, but I think... like something going wrong? I think right. Star Tours is the first one where someone the whole time is telling you this is not, yeah. this is breaking, this is falling apart, you know? Yeah. I think. I can't think of another one. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, 
Uh, so that's kind of where, you know, anyway, that, that was just a genius move. Yeah. You'd be flying through, uh, and you're trying to go on your own way, and then suddenly you get sucked into the tractor beam mm-hmm. of the Star Destroyers and all that stuff. And it's funny, I remember every time I would go that on that with my family, there's that badass part where you're, oh, well, it looks like we're home free, and then, yeah, once you're caught up the, by yep. the ships, and the theme kicks in. Dun, 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 in yeah. case you didn't know what the theme was. Um, that theme kicks in and blares, and it was always like, that part was really cool. Mm-hmm. And every single time, and I don't know if he was aware, but every time I would go that on that with my dad, yeah. whenever that music would kick in, he would out loud say, that's hot! He would all, <laughs> I don't know if he knew he did that every time. Maybe not. But I would wait for that. Even in my adult years, I would go on him in the final days of the original yeah. ride. I'd wait for it. I'd go wait for it. Wait for it. I'd be, like if Dominic was there, I'd be like, yeah. wait for it. Wait for it. That's hot. Okay, there it is. <laughs> anyway, uh, but that part was it was hot. I mean, that's good. That, yeah. that theme is eternally great. But anyway, so you get caught, you you know, and then you'd uh, you do the trench run and all that stuff, mm-hmm. and you get out of the ride. Um, I uh, loved the original Star Star Tours. Oh yeah. Um, of course, after many years, uh, they did replace it. Um, uh, you know, one thing, you know, I do consider myself, uh, and, I, and I'm sure you do to a degree, whatever, you know, whatever, Disney, I'm, I don't know what you want to say, Disney purist or Disney, yeah. uh, you know, you love the history, you love, you know, you want everything keep, about it. You want to keep the old stuff, you know, and I love, I love the old stuff. But uh, one thing that I seem to disagree with on from a lot of the other purists I see online and people who talk about this yeah. stuff is the love for the new Star Tours. I feel like a lot of the OG, like, Disney park like connoisseurs, whatever you want to what it, call it, don't like the new one, and I love the new one. It, it was showing its age. It really was. It was really, really showing its yeah. age, and the update was amazing. Yeah, in, in, any, in every regard. I totally, yeah, I love the new one. Yeah. Um, what do would I have preferred they kept the old one forever? Yeah, sure, because I'm nostalgic for yeah, it. It would have been fine, but uh, yeah, I would personally would love that. Um, uh. You know, we'll talk about it in a second, but when yeah. I went over to Paris, it was still the old one. Yeah. And that was awesome. But it was janky. The old one is janky. Now, I, again, I love it. I have, a, I have a love for it. If it was here forever, I'd love it forever. But it was janky. It got janky. Yeah. And it was not... People weren't writing it, like, anymore. Honestly, like, uh, you know, not that... Not that, that technology has been around since the 80s. Yeah. And now it here we are in the field. Like, yeah. It, we're now, and it's like, you see that in malls. Uh, yeah, stuff. exactly. Like, I, I'm, I'm not yeah. the kind of person that's like, update everything. Yeah, no. tear it up. No, I, I keep it on the old stuff. But I don't think it was... It, it, honestly, that was one where it showed its age, and no one was going on it. That became the ride for me that uh, when I would come here with friends... Yeah. Because there was a time where all of us had annual passes. And uh, now it's pricier. Not all of us have yeah. <laughs> annual, annual passes. I think some some people uh, are not into wanting to pay for that. But <laughs> uh, but uh, all my friends would go on Space Mountain. Yeah, which is right, I'm, pretty much right next door. Right next door. Yeah, and I'm not a coaster guy. Yeah. Uh, so I would just be like, no, all right, I'm going to go on Star Tours, mm. and there'd be no line, and I would go on Star Tours like five times yeah. in the amount of time it took them to go once. Yeah. On Space Mountain. So. Uh, so that's where it was, kind of in the final days. It really was kind of, you know. It was, it was like it need. It was it's for an update. Yeah. yeah, and and I I think that was the right thing to do. Yeah. And I again I love the new one. In terms of the ride through, like the film that you watch as you ride through it, I like the old one because it kind of gave you a taste of everything. The new one is randomized, so you actually go to a different location every time. Yeah. Every every neck of it. I think originally it was three, and then three different things in the middle, and yeah. three other. But I don't know how. Like they've added, they've added variants, they've added more. Stuff. So yeah. I don't know what is like how many options there are. Now. But yeah, but uh, as much as I like the old film that played in there, yeah, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> oh my god, that was embarrassing. Cut that out. Um, as much as I loved that, uh, I honestly I think people have a lot of fun with the new one randomizing. Oh yeah, I think that added. You know, because there's, I've heard the argument that like. They should just, you know, they shouldn't randomize. They should just make the best one location and stick to that. But I don't know. It's fun every time. Yeah, make them all good and then mix them up. Yeah, I think... um, I I wish they would randomize it more. Yeah, I think... um, (laughs) 
I think it's uh, really fun going on there and like, oh, what'd you get? Oh, what, yeah. you know, especially when we do it for like, we go for game days or whatever. It's like, yeah. okay, which one did you get? I got the Death Star. I didn't get the Death Star. Yeah. You know, I really like that. I think it's, I think it's fun. Mm-hmm. Although I've gotten the Coruscant. I was just going to say like, yeah, it, it's the same one. It like, uh, it doesn't randomize as yeah. often as I'd like. Yeah. Uh, but I, so anyway, going back to when they were closing it down. Yeah. So the original Star Tours, again, uh, yeah, they started closing it. Didn't they? It was like 2010, 2011, somewhere yeah, around there. that's when it, yeah. Uh, the one thing I'll say, I, I liked, I think Rex, the, the pilot in the cabin, was an iconic Disneyland character. Mm. I do think that's missing. I kind of wish Rex was still, still there. involved. Um, well, when they were showing the stuff, they were showing this new, like, uh, yeah. and I'm like, that's not Rex. Like, I don't, A new pilot. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a whole story behind that. There too. is. So, uh, yeah, they were, this, the, the new Star Tours was supposed to take place, it's like they actually gave it a canon, like, yeah. here's when it takes place during the Star Wars saga, mm-hmm. which, uh, I, I love Star Wars. I did not think that that's necessary. I think that is overthinking it yeah. so much. Because there's still stuff on the right that I see people go, well, you know, they would, there were no Hoff battles um, <laughs> between episode three and four. Who cares? Like, yeah, that's like going to Indiana Jones. Oh, what what, uh, what movies does this take place in yeah. between? Although like, it doesn't matter. I've like, heard I've heard people try to extract that answer too. Really? Like, oh, it's it's yeah, it's just before Temple of Doom. Just ride the ride and have fun. I like, know, <laughs> I know. But anyway, uh, uh, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, yeah so time, yeah, so they when they started to so they're updating the ride. They said, well, this one's going to take place at this point in the saga. It takes mm. place earlier in time than the last before ride. the old. Yeah, yeah. So the original ride, everything was like kind of blown up and burnt and yeah. like destroyed. Things were in pieces. Well, now on this new ride, everything's really shiny and brand yeah. new and stuff like that. And it's funny. I remember going on the new one with Eric, and yeah. uh, and uh, and I think who he was dating at the time. And Eric was like, "I wonder why it used to be all run down and why they decided to make it, like, why was it all like wrecked before? Like, mm-hmm. what happened?" And uh, and the girl he was with was like a war. It's, like, it's called Star Wars. Yeah. It was like, oh yeah, duh. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, we were like, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, it was supposed to take place. That ride, I guess, was what was after all the movies ended. You know, mm. I guess whatever. Again, not that it matters. Yeah. But anyway, so the new ride was supposed to take place earlier, and then they said, oh, it's gonna have a new pilot. We're gonna have a new pilot. Nervous Rex, he's out. Mm. We got the original model pilot before the before everything got run down. Yeah. What they they gave him a name? I forgot what it was. Ace. I think, well, it, was I think Ace. it was Ace. Yeah. And it was like a nicer, shinier yeah. version of that robot. And they showed him, and it was going to and it was going to be voiced by uh, what's Patrick his name? Warburg? Yeah, Patrick Warburton. Yeah. And where you know, welcome aboard Star Tours. Yeah. Flight. You know, and he was supposed to be he was supposed to be like overly cocky. Yep. How do I know you're not a shape-shifting clone? You know, he was yeah. going to talk and, like, take people around the galaxy. Oh, meteor shower. Nice try. And, you know, steer yeah. around it. It was a different type of thing. And it was supposed to be the prime the prime of the Star Tours yeah. travel agency, kind of. You know, and then you go to random locations. And then what was funny is I remember reading those blogs and saying, well, at least they're doing some mm-hmm. variation on Rex. And then all of a sudden, Disney posted an article that was like, oh, uh... Just, just kidding. Um, that's not the pilot. It's C three PO. Yeah. And it was like, what? What happened? Where did what yeah. happened there? Um. And uh, as it turns out, uh, I guess George Lucas stepped in. Like George Lucas obviously oversaw the whole thing. Yeah. And when he wrote it, he had and I, you know a lot of people attack George Lucas's decisions later in life mm-hmm. in his life, but. Uh, the thing that I actually agreed with him on was that he said, you got to have a nervous pilot. Yeah. This having guy's a, too sure of himself. Yeah. He said, having no. a cocky pilot does not work as well as having a guy going, what are we doing? What's happening? You know? Yeah. And so it was so last minute. It was like, well, what do we do? Hey, well, we have, Hey, we, we got it. C3PO, get C3PO in here. Yeah. So then it was a last minute decision, which that must've sucked because Disney does not go back on stuff. Like no. when they make an announcement, it's when it's for sure. Yeah, but when George Lucas tells you, it, yeah, it's you kind of got to do it. Yeah, and so I bet that when he lowered the boom, they were all like, "Oh no!" Like, there's still there was merchandise of that new pilot and like yeah. stuff like that. So from what I understand, uh, so what happened was they changed it to C3PO last minute. Yeah, and, and, I, and I've heard very last minute, uh, but 
they uh, they like Disney loves Patrick Warburton. Yeah, they can't get enough of Patrick Warburton. They recast him. So after they they kicked him out of the pilot role, mm-hmm. they uh, gave him, they put his voice into the uh, in the new queue. Yeah. there's a droid that's scanning everybody like a security, security check. checkpoint. Yeah, yeah. and he, now he voices that where yeah. he's like, "No, oh, watch out for that Wookie. Oh, oh, it's your boyfriend." Oh, you know, like yeah. you know that yeah. that kind of you know. Ace is actually still on the ride though. In the yeah. in the video you watch before yeah. you go on the thing, he's the pilot, and that. then they switch places because yep. C three PO needs to like fix something up. Yep. And uh, I totally forgot yeah. about that. So he's still on the ride in some regard, but it's not his voice. Yeah, it's not yeah, Patrick yeah. Warburton's voice. Yeah, it's not, huh? No, nope, it's somebody else. Yeah, I wonder whose voice that yeah, is. I don't know. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Um. But anyway, when they changed the cue. The, the original queue of the old Star Tours. You know, I don't know which one I like better. I think they did a good job with the new one. Yeah. But the old one had, if you remember, it was like droids building more other droids. Yeah. And it was like junk. In the in the first part, is relatively the same. Yeah. But then you go beyond that, and um, that's where it changes. The yeah. old one, it was like you were going to a back like maintenance area. Yeah, you were you were behind the scenes. Yeah, kind of. and there was there was like baskets full of parts and gears yeah. and stuff going on the scene. I loved that. Yeah. That was a cool little touch. That's gone now, so I yeah. miss that. Yeah, um, the baskets of, of junk. Yeah, it was just a cool by. little touch. And, and it, there were droids going, "Hey, over here! Bring it over here!" Yeah. And and my favorite, a welder. Yeah. Yeah, there's a guy welding it. And my favorite touch amongst all that is that they were listening to like a music player. Yeah. And it was playing like droid music, which which went like ding 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 yep. ding ding ding. That was so eighties Lucasfilm to me. Yeah. I love it. He has that. a little boom box next to him, he's yeah. welding and he's just talking to you as you're going by welding yes. stuff. And yeah. uh, I, I prefer the old one. In that regard, in the I old think in that so. in that back area that yeah, you go into. I think so. I like the old one better. Yeah, the front room of the queue yeah. is like you said, the same. You got a star speeder over there, C3PO and R2D2 are yelling at each other, yeah. and a big screen showing you destinations. Yeah. That's the same. Mostly. But uh but yeah, that back yeah. room, you're right. The, the, I think I like the old the one. The welder more. robot of the old one is now scanning uh, luggage. Yes. And uh, same spot and stuff like that, still talking but I just yes. I prefer the old way. Yeah, I think so. I do like now the angle that they've taken with it to kind of modernize it is that yeah, it's TSA. It's yeah. security. And I think that was a good move because that that puts it in a context that people and people really Everybody feel now. Chance, yeah. And uh, I think they did a good job. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah the droid scanning all the luggage and there's a million gags with that. Like you could watch that for an hour and not see every gag. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. if you notice that droid that's scanning your luggage and was welding before has yeah. webbed feet, and that's just because yeah. it was an old robot yeah. from America Sings, and it was they skinned it. it. Yeah, they skinned it and then just used that. Yeah, they there were like from what I from what I recall there were three like singing geese in yeah. that ride or in in America Sings mm-hmm. the show. And then suddenly one day there were one. Yep. Or something like that. Or there were five and then there were two. Yeah. Or something like that. They skinned the geese they and used put them it in there. for the for that one. Yeah. Uh, which is great. I loved America Sings. By the way, I saw that as a kid. Oh. I was singing Pop Goes the Weasel all day. <laughs> anyway, so those are in there. He scans the luggage. He scans luggage and there's yeah. like there's a lot of great gags for like Captain EO and all kinds of stuff. Um, I like, I think that's one ride that, like, when, again, they scanned the luggage and it was like Indiana Jones' stuff. It was, yeah, uh, there's little, there's little gags. Easter eggs. Thing. Easter eggs. To that's one there. ride that I think can get away with that. I think Disney lately has been a little too self referential. Like, whenever they redo a ride or work on a ride, they yeah. add, like, a reference to Disneyland in it. Like, like, the new Guardians of the Galaxy ride, they reference Disneyland. Yeah. It opens and they go, whoa, Disneyland. Yeah. I just feel like uh, they need to tone that down. Yeah. But Star Tours, it kind of makes sense because they're scanning guest luggage. Yes. That's that's the character of mm-hmm. it, you know, so there would be Disneyland stuff. So I think they kind of get away with it there. But that's splitting hairs, whatever. Um, I think that gag is good. They also added, yeah, the, there's the droid at the top who I think is actually a great addition. Yeah. The droid scanning everybody and there talking before? to people. I don't remember what was there before. There was a droid was in a there. Droid there just, was a droid. Oh, it was just a different. And he was just in a room, like controlling stuff. Oh, yeah. just, okay. All right, no, 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 no. And there, yeah, the panels. I remember what, the panels what, would go from transparent to opaque. Wouldn't he tell? I forgot the the welder robot would like stop working for a while, yeah. and then somebody would yell at him. I don't know if it was that robot or something over. Maybe intercom it was saying like, yeah. like get back to work or something. Hey, droid, get back to work. Yeah, yeah you're it was right. Something. He was getting. He got yelled at for talking with the people. In the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. But, uh, Interesting. Yeah. 
Oh, also in that line in the new one, they actually uh, Rex is a hidden thing. Yeah, in, and they put him in a was it a like uh, um, like a shipment of, of droids? It looks like they're getting a shipment of droids. Yeah, right and they and he's in one of them, and yeah. he actually ha- has speaking parts. If you wait long enough, yeah. he'll actually talk. It's like it's, it's like, like he's just like, just like glitching on. out and, yeah. and yeah. welcome. Yeah, you know. and it's still it's Paul Rubens and everything. Like yeah, that. yeah. Uh, which great memory of that because I remember there was a friend of ours yeah who uh, uh, was kind of a negative person <laughs> like would like the kind you, you get people out there you, you have that one friend Everybody does, who yeah. hates everything but still does everything yeah you know like they hate every Harry Potter movie but they'll go see it with you every time you yeah. know like you know that kind of yeah. person uh, and I remember this particular person uh, when she went to, she would always, she would go, she had an annual pass to Disneyland, would go every day, and would talk about how it's not as good as Disney World, uh, not finished, not that great, yeah. but p- would go every day. Yeah. Go figure. But anyway, uh, I kept thinking, she's going to say something negative about the new Star Tours. I know it. And then sure enough, she went on, she went on uh, the new one. Yeah. And saw Rex, you know, he's in a box. He's, yeah, he's boxed up in the queue. And there's like little lights and stuff like that, and she took it at somehow she took it as they're ripping them apart. Yeah, they're like dismantling. So she wrote like, online like, "Shame on them for ripping apart old Rex animatronic in the line. Shame on them for showing his death." And it's like I don't I don't think he's dying. No, this ride takes place before. I, yeah. think, I think they're opening them up. Mm. Uh, yep. Anyway, <laughs> so who knows? Whatever. No pleasing some people, but anyway. Yeah. So that part of the, the queue is cool. Now you okay? Okay. So the ride, whatever. The new ride, you uh, again. You have C three PO at the helm now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he's not. He get, yeah. It was supposed to be the other guy piloting. They switch places. C three PO got stuck yeah. in there. Yeah. And uh, the a great addition to the ride. A great addition to the main ride itself. But brings a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. I gotta say, is that now there is a rebel spy aboard the ship. And what they do is they take your photo at some point yeah. in your loading. At some point in the loading, they yeah. take a photo. They added a camera system to the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so they'll have an intro, depending on what intro you get. Sometimes you get Darth Vader showing up and he goes, we know you have a rebel spy. You, have you seen this person? And it shows up. And, and the, the photo screen. shows up. Yeah. On the, yeah. And it's and it's whoever they took a picture of. Yeah. Which is random. Or is it? Because... It's going to get awkward for a minute. It's going to get a little tense for a minute. Just warning everybody. Kevin has gotten the Rebel Spy role almost every time I, I've, I've lost been count. on it. I mean... I've lost count. It, it, it's in the 20, 20th time. It's got to be 20-something times. <laughs> I've been on it since it became the new one. Yeah. I've probably, six years ago? I've probably been on it... Yeah, about six years ago. Yeah. I've probably been on it 6,000 times. Roughly, yeah. I'd say that. And I never got it. And he would get it every, every single time. time. Literally, I'd go, you're not, it's not going to be you. Every Stop. time. Stop. Don't, it better not be. And then, have you seen the Rebel Spy? And it would be Kevin's <laughs> picture. Me. Looking right at the camera, I'd be like, you son of a... The best is when the, the lead up of sitting down, like, if you're fucking the Rebel Spy again. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then it's so much sweeter than when my mug... It just gets put up on the Yeah, it's sweet for you, maybe. Not for me. Oh, <laughs> man, that pissed me off. But I will say, lately, recently, I finally got it. You did. I did. And I was with you. Yep. And I got it. And, man, for one day yep. of my life, I was happy. And then we went again later, <laughs> and, and you got, got it again. again. You got it again. <laughs> Every time. But anyway, uh, that's a great addition to the ride. Yeah, I uh, like that. The Darth Vader intro. Okay, so let, let, me, let me back it up a little bit. Should back it up to when it opened. When when they opened the new Star Tours, uh, it was uh, around, yeah, again, 2011, I think, wasn't yeah. it? Summer 2011. Yeah. And they announced uh, they announced previews for the like they did annual pass previews. Yeah. Which they so, did around. They haven't done that in a while, but they used to do that for a lot of new rides. They yeah. Did the Mermaid, all that stuff. Yeah. So you would get an email saying, yeah, "Hey, you, we're doing previews." Yeah. If you're an annual pass holder, so come on this day, and you can go on it before anybody else. Yeah. So I heard they were doing that for Star Tours, and I was like, oh, I want to go on the new Star Tours. I'm yeah. excited. You know, I'm so excited. And I prayed for an email. <laughs> I forgot about this. And then 
I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And if you got one, you could take five people. Yeah. So it was like, okay, we you can, pick a time we can all go. Yeah. And five people. Yeah. A, a bunch of us can go as yeah. long as one person gets an email. And we're all, we're all annual pass holders. So I'm like, just come on. Refreshing my email. I didn't get one. Oh. Mm. Derek and Sean. Bloop. Got they both get them. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> and it was for like a Friday. Or no, no, no. It was for like a Saturday or something like that. A w- weeks before it opened. And it was like, you get to go on it with up to five friends. And they were both like, oh my god, yeah, oh! And I'm like, guys, 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 put yep. me in a group, put me in a group, put me in a group. And it was immediately like, okay, who's going to be in whose group? Okay. Uh, you know, immediately it started going, okay, so-and-so's in my group, Garrett's yeah. in my group, so-and-so's in my group. <laughs> okay, well, I'll take da 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 It was like choosing basketball teams. Yeah. You know? And so, anyway, uh, so I immediately, I just volunteered. I, I, uh, I, w- I w- back in the day, I would go to, I would go to Disneyland with Sean a lot more than anybody else. Yeah. This was before he had a ton of kids to mm. take care of. Mm. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's a Disneyland nut too. At some point, we got to have him on here. Yeah. But anyway, uh, friend Sean, I, I immediately went, all right, I'm on your, I'm on yeah. your group. And then Derek can pick whoever on his group, but I'm, I'll, I'll go with you, Sean. And then Sean goes, perfect, perfect. This is great. Um, and then he tells me, uh, yeah, it's perfect because uh, his stepdaughter, uh, he tells me, he's like, yeah, her, uh, she has a dance recital that day. So what I'm going to do is go there. It's in Anaheim. I'll go there. I'll drive back to Disneyland. I'll get my ticket. I'll go back to the dance recital to see her performance. I'll go in. I'll take the monorail into the park. Hopefully in time for Star Tours, and in my mind I'm like, like oh my, I'm like, get me out don't this. screw this up for me. In my brain I was like, he's gonna foul this up. I can't <laughs> risk it. I can't. So I, he's like telling me all this, and I'm texting yeah. Derek. Derek, put me in your group. Put me in your group. Give me a slot. Uh, and then he's like, what's? Why are you texting me? What? I didn't have the courage to tell Sean. Uh, I gotta get out of your group. Yeah. I can't be here. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it all worked out. Yeah. It was it was fine. I was being a paranoid. Uh, uh, I was being a Disney fan above being a friend. Mm. So I apologize to Sean. That was wrong of me. But I was. It was the new Star Tours. Yeah. To it, be I mean, to be fair. Yeah. It was no, nobody had written on it. And <laughs> yeah. Everybody wanted to like exactly. I was stoked to see it. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so uh, so we eventually we went. Yeah. Um, oh, but I was gonna say so. I did eventually, after them, I did get an email. I got oh, an email did. myself, yeah. And my time was actually earlier. Uh, theirs was for a Saturday. They invited me to come Friday. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, well, I'm not working that day. I'm going up to. I'm yeah. going up there. And uh, But Derek and Sean had all kinds of stuff they had to do. It was too... Sh- Someone's dying over there. Um, not literally. But anyway, uh, they couldn't make it for whatever reason. Yeah. So Eric and Brian went, went with me. Uh, they were in the area. I think Eric at the time was living yeah. around here. Oh, yeah. And so I was like, you guys want to go? Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah, why not? Okay, yeah. sure. It was totally a chill thing. I think I was going up to L.A. for the day, but it was like, yeah, we'll stop by in the morning and check out the new Star Tours. Okay. I was downplaying my excitement. We went in there. I knew nothing. We went in there, and I'm telling you, you saw three grown-ass dudes lose it because I didn't know anything. And we're in there. We... Uh, Star Tours, I think, is Eric's maybe Eric's favorite ride. Really, yeah, way up there. I think yeah. that might be his top one. And so we've all been on this classic together a hundred thousand times. We sit there, and then all of a sudden, dun, Darth Vader yeah. comes in and he grabs, grabs the ship. I have you now, or yeah. whatever he says. That's the best intro too. You started out with the best one. That cabin, it, it was like only me and Eric and Brian. Yeah. I don't know why it was just us. Yeah, but we were oh. oh! Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, and we start, and then you know, you fly backwards and you shoot at Darth Vader, and he blocks it with a lightsaber. We were just like, "Oh my god!" Yep. Oh! We were yelling. My my, I mean, my voice was gone mm. that day. We were wigging out. It was so much fun. Yeah. And uh, and then we all got to go back that Saturday, and uh, that was a blast too. Um, and that opened around the same time as the Little Mermaid ride, right? Yeah, I think I, so. I think I went on that like by myself later that night. And it was kind of weird because yeah. it was like, oh, here's a ride like no, one, no one's yeah. been on, and I'm the only one on it. Mm. It's not a scary ride, but it w- was when when nobody when else you're is alone there. on it. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of weird. 
But anyway, so yeah, we were all super stoked on that. And we all got different planets. Yep. But I still think the intro with Darth Vader showing up it's is still the always best. The best. When I get that one, I'm like, stoked. yeah. I'm if like, I don't get that one, I'm a little bit like, ah, oh, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you could get the Darth Vader. I think the current options are the Darth Vader intro, where he stops you. Yeah. Then there's an intro where stormtroopers stop you. And a droid comes up to the thing. Yeah, a droid, a droid tries to hang on to you. Oh, Mickey's up there. Oh, Mickey just showed up. Yep. Um, then for the planets, there's what? There's pod racing on Tatooine. Yes. Which was what, when they announced the new Star Tours, that was what everyone was afraid of. Mm. Don't turn it into pod racing. Of course they added that. That was probably a George Lucas, George Lucas idea. Mm. Um, uh, Hoth. Hoth. Yeah. Which is probably my favorite of the first planets. Yeah. Uh, There's uh, a time uh, where I would only get Hoth. Yeah, that got a little That's annoying. That's done. Like, yeah, Kashyyyk, which is the Wookiee planet. Oh, yeah. I but I like that. that they turned that into kind of a Return of the Jedi thing, too. Yeah. You got the speeders in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's cool. And then... And you uh, got like a transitional thing. Yeah, transitional thing. So yeah. it's a hologram. Yeah. And it's either going to be Leia, which they digitally altered Princess Leia's face. Yeah. To talk. Uh, Akbar, Yoda, and, and now, now BB-8. BB-8, yeah. My favorite memory of that is Yoda appearing, and they all look like blue floating holograms. Yeah. One time I went on it, probably the cutest Disneyland moment of all time, mm. most adorable, whatever you want to say, is I went on that and uh, the image of Yoda, it was the hologram of Yoda, and he goes, Yoda, I am, you know, yeah. whatever. That came up and you heard a three-year-old kid go, Daddy, is he in heaven? And uh, that made the entire cabin laugh. <laughs> you didn't hear the rest of the ride. Everyone yeah. was cracking up. Daddy, is he in heaven? Uh, as opposed to when Akbar shows up, there's always that one joker in the cabin that yells, it's a trap. Which is... Not funny ever. Never funny. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Anyway, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So anyway, uh, going back. So those are the transitional parts. Yeah. No, actually, but, but, but for the planets before that, at one point they added... They, uh, and I... Jakku. What's, uh, is that the one for the new movie? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Which I actually think, actually, in all honesty, is probably the best one. I loved it. I think that's the most exciting of the of the just of yeah. the beginning planets. And what sells it is they get the actor. They got a uh, yeah, they got what's the his actor, name? Uh, um, John Boyega. Yeah, as Finn, and he's like, "Star Wars, what are you doing here?" Like that, he, he did a really good job. Yeah, I love that. that there's a point where it, for the first time ever, sits you down like this, so you're just. You're stopped, yeah, at an angle, and yeah. it's like it's just so foreign because yeah, they've feels, never done that in that ride up. before. Yeah, yeah. So that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't gotten that. Is that, I don't even think that's in the rotation anymore right now. I don't. I haven't, I haven't gotten seen it in a long time in, since the it's movie came out. To, it's supposed to stay in. Yeah. But I haven't. I haven't seen it. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so those are the first planets. Then the holograms, transitions, whatever. Then for the final planets, what do they have now? They have the one that's. Uh, the Death Star. I guess they call it Geonosis, but I don't you know. You go through the Death Star. Is, yeah, you go through the Death Star. That's that. Yeah, you wouldn't know Geonosis. No. You, you never. He has not seen the prequels. I've not, and Still, I probably never will. I, I think that's a great place yeah. to be. Anyway, uh, that's the Death Star one. Um, Naboo. Yeah, which I which know, I think is the best one at all. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I hate Naboo, but I think that one is a yeah. good one. The three most thrilling. My favorite is probably the Death Star one, but the Naboo, but the Naboo one is exciting. That's, yeah. they did a good job. Uh. And then the one I always get every single time I go on the ride, Coruscant, which you're in the city and like they cut your power and you fall. Yeah. Which is weird. That fall is still not as scary as the original fall on the first it's Star It's not course. as quick because it's yeah. just you're constantly going straight down. That other one is just... Like, yeah, it was a hard drop. Yeah, hard drop. Anyway. But it wasn't really a drop. It's just it's just like... Mental basically drop. Basically, mental drop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, totally. Anyway, uh, mental drop is the name of my new jam band, by the way. <laughs> But anyway, uh, so it's those. Or yeah. Any any other? Uh, that's all I can think about. They did add changes, like yeah, uh, like that's last what you were year, saying. Yeah. Last year they kind of just added slight changes, variations, to each one. variations. Yeah. Not doesn't change where you go or anything like that. Right. But different things will happen. Right. And uh, like on the Wookiee planet, a Wookiee will f swing across, or um, yeah. one of these creatures will fly up. Yeah. There's variations, creatures, stuff like that. So and yeah. those are also in the rotation too. So there's yeah. Uh, There's a lot of different variants. Yeah. And that's why I, I think the, the new one is really cool. I think yeah. it's really fun. I do too. Uh, now, when you leave the ride, you go on that and they say goodbye. Thank you for, thank you for Star Tours. You know, thank you for Star Tours. Yeah. Thank <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, oh, 
let's back it up. Before you actually step in, yeah. we should just say real quick. Another classic thing about the old ride was the the instruction safety video. Yes. And they had uh, a woman with uh, she I don't had know hair talking. that was like off to the side. It almost looked like her head looked like a hidden Mickey almost. It was okay. like two big buns on the yeah. side. And uh, I guess they tried to find her for the new safety video, and, like, they can't find that actress anywhere. Yeah, you were saying that. Uh, but if you watch the safety video, there's a red-haired woman in the old one who, you know, you see her buckle her safety belt. She's in the new one, too. She's awesome. She's 20 years older, but yeah. she's in it. Um, so I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, oh, so when you... Anyway, so you go on the ride. Once you would get out of the ride, I, ha- I got to... Again, I got to hand it to the old Star Tours. They would have these posters up that were, again, different destinations. And when I was younger, it got me excited because I thought, maybe someday they'll go to those other planets. Yeah. And uh, they would be for, you know, Endor, Hoth, Dagobah, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever. And I loved those posters because they would have a different font for every planet, but they would have this scenic shot. And those were all from ILM, from Industrial Light Mm -hmm. Magic. They would export these big awesome effect shots yeah. from the old movies which were tangible effects they weren't CG they were either really good paintings or models or whatever and they would have posters of them and I loved them. those posters would get my imagination going when I was younger like, yeah. they were just they felt like real shots of these places and my favorite of all of them was the awesome painting of the guy on a tauntaun the creature in, yeah. on Hoth mm-hmm. that poster for Hoth and I remember my entire I mean all of my throughout all my 20s every time I go on that ride at the end uh, with uh, I'd go with Sean and I'd tell him like someday I'm going to own that Hoth poster that yeah. artwork and it was a Ralph McQuarrie painting who was an amazing artist mm-hmm. I'm going to have that I'm going to own that poster I'm going to own that and eventually when I event, when uh, later in life when I moved into my own place yeah. it timed out perfectly that online someone was selling all the original posters awesome and uh, so I hunted those down I paid more than I, 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 I set out a budget for when I moved out because I needed everything. I didn't have furniture, yeah. or I didn't have anything, and I ate into my furniture budget for those prints. Yeah, I they, had to get those. I need, I need it. They're, they're, they're important. I ended up, uh, yeah, I, you know, I didn't have like tables or chairs for a while, uh, whatever, but I had those posters, which then also kind of bit me later, too, because actually, just about a year ago, yeah, Disney for a limited time, like a week offered them on their website. Oh. Bigger versions. Yeah. Like, bigger, nicer versions. Yeah. But, I mean, it was cool. I had yeah, the original. original. So that, that was a cool, that was a cool yeah. kind of novelty. But, uh, still, you know, and it, I still, I ended up buying the bigger ones. Uh, oh, no, okay. Not of all of them, but yeah, of Yeah, just Hoth, your favorite. Of, my favorites were Hoth yeah. and, uh, Hoth and Endor were my okay. favorite. And I got the giant versions of those, and I so I have those in my house now. Yeah. But anyway, uh, those posters were awesome. They would, you know, show all the different places. I think what they have now is kind of too generic. It, you walk the, out, yeah, they. It's just kind of like signs that you know, crazy Coruscant, tantalizing Tatooine, and it's just a picture of a planet. There's no yeah. uh, artwork. There's no yeah. Ralph McQuarrie. There's no. Yeah, I just feel like it's forgettable. It's like uh, I don't know. But let's let's get the artwork back in yeah. here. You know, so I'm I'm kind of disappointed in that. Personally, yeah, I definitely see that. Uh, and then I feel like I have a memory of there being artwork at one point, like they were. It was funded by Energizer or something. And they had, and they was, had a thing up there. And there this was some new kind one of being painting. funded by Energizer. I don't know. I don't remember. But there, I feel like there was a painting of some kind of cartoony-looking creature or something, and he had an Energizer battery or something. I don't. I don't I was it be, the family? The, Ener- the No, it was a Duracell family. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember. But anyway, that's one thing I was missing. Uh, but then you leave the ride in both versions you leave the ride and you go to Star Trader yeah which was their store uh, exit through the gift shop mm. and uh, it used to be a lot of different Tomorrowland stuff and Star Wars stuff now it is just all tomo- Star Wars it is a Star Wars store yeah I love Star Wars I, I still feel like there should be more there I, I Tomorrowland is such a you know I love the futurism stuff mm. For a while there, they were selling Captain EO stuff in there. They were selling all this other stuff. I feel like they should go back to that. I, I feel yeah. like enough Star Wars. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, they're kind of going a little too far with that. But they have, again, they have stuff I buy, so... Yeah. Whatever. Um, the Star Trader store has uh, something that I remember since I was a little kid. 
the neon sign outside. It's oh, a neon side yeah. of yeah. Mickey tumbling through space. Yeah, that's been there forever. Forever. And I have to say, you know, what's funny is yeah. uh, someone recently, I think it was a former Imagineer, I want to say it was Tom. No, I don't remember who. I don't remember. Some former Imagineer on Twitter just recently, like, he went through a whole... He has a drawer at home full of old sketches and stuff. Yeah. And he found one that a friend did. And he's like... He, he worked on stuff in Florida, mm. not really in California. So he posted it online, like, anybody know what the significance of this sketch is? And all these California kids were like, were like that. oh, that's the neon sign. It was it was artwork of Mickey. Yeah, each, each, each frame space. of it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, he better hang on to that. Oh, yeah. Dang, or sell it or yeah. something. Anyway, uh, but, yeah, basically, uh, more is there to say. I mean, there was also the Starcade connected to it. Yeah, and that, uh, that's boarded up, gone now. Uh, the, yeah, that's all kind of boarded up now. It's it's finished. Yeah, but they did take the, um, is it a TIE Fighter? X wing, X wing. I don't know. You're gonna get you're gonna get roasted. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, that was hanging up there since the '80s. Yeah. Even after it closed, it was hanging up there. And when they yeah. reopened the new Star Tours, yeah. they moved that down to the. It's hanging yeah. in, the, in the gift shop now. The and it's so funny. I tell people all the time. Yeah, the gift shop has an, a full size X wing, and they're like, No, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Yeah. No, I don't see it. Look up. Oh my god! It's like you just never. Yeah. You just don't commonly look up. And uh, yeah. it's above you the yeah. whole time. And not paying, nobody really notices that. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. It's such a huge thing, and yeah. it's just missing. Yeah. Uh, oh. It's yeah about the exit. Yeah. We, um, Brian, friend Brian, uh, when you when you get on this ride, it's a 3D ride, so you put on the 3D glasses. And uh, when you leave, there's a bunch of bins and everything like that. To oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Brian has always had a technique. Of, uh, <laughs> there's a ramp you kind of have to go down and kind of zigzags down. Yeah, you go the down shot. the ramp, down the and ramp. And at the end of the ramp um, is the is the place you drop this in. Yeah. Well, if you walk to the very top, you can see directly down and see these bins. He will always drop them from the very top of this ramp down into the bin to try to make it in. Yeah. The cast yeah. members do not like it. No, they hate <laughs> at it. At all. They yeah. hate it. Yep. He does it every time. Sorry. did, it, did No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We've, now we refer to that affectionately as the Brian trick. Yep. When you try to drop it from high above, that really makes them mad. Yes. Uh, I love it. Um, sorry, cast members. Anyway, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, but I was just going to say, going back to the X-Wing. Oh, yeah. Uh, when that was in its little pocket of the Starcade, I really enjoyed that because it was kind of like a secret detail. Like, mm-hmm. it was always like, dude, there's a whole X-Wing in that building. Because it was closed up, there. like that that building's been closed for like twenty years. Yeah. But you look, and it's like, is there a whole X wing in there? Yeah, you that's can see crazy. it hanging up there the whole time. Uh, so when they moved that in, I was like, that's cool. But I kind of like that being like a weird hidden yeah. detail. So whatever, anyway. But it's it's a good thing they moved it in there. Uh, is there much more to say about that? I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we left out. Uh, Didn't you have a story about a guy in the with the seatbelt? Oh, I was just going to say, one time there was a family from China. Oh, yeah. Uh, they were on the ride, and, uh, my, yeah, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite interactions I've ever seen was that uh, they, they go to every row, like, put on your, buckle your seatbelt, buckle your seatbelt, buckle your seatbelt. Yeah. Every they row. They have to check everybody. Check everybody. Yeah. And this, uh, the man, in the, the, this Chinese man, uh, he buckled the seatbelt of the chair and then sat down on top so of he, like, it. Buckled it over and he then buckled sat. the seat belt into the chair and sat down on top of the belt. Yeah. What? Why? And the woman came over. He didn't speak English. She was speaking like yeah. Mandarin. And so she was like, "Um, you, you, you. Uh, there's the the belt. Uh, and then she's just she just didn't know how to get through to him. Yeah. He was just like, "What?" He was looking at her and she was like, uh, "Why have you done this?" Uh. And that for some reason that line always stuck with me. What? Uh, why have you done this? Uh, cracked me up. Yeah. But anyway, they're announcing something. There might be fireworks. Fireworks might start be starting soon. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it, though. I, I can't think. think right? of anything else yeah. Really. No, I think I think we're pretty much uh, at at the end. Uh, but anyway, you know, we were wondering if there was stuff that like if we could even fill like an hour talking we, about this. We, uh, yeah. But this is way longer than the last episode. It you is. Know? Star Tours is one of those rides that has enough layers of history. Definitely. That I think it was, you know worthy of discussion yeah. on its own. 
So I don't know. Anything else? I, I mean, can't think of anything. Yeah, I, I think that kind of is the story. Again, I really like the new one. I the do old, too. The old one's classic, and yeah. I do wish I wish they would like even if it was a special event, play the old film. <laughs> you, they, uh, why, there's no reason they can't. Yeah, they like, can switch films all the time, which is really funny. Actually, I just wanted to say this too. If you ever go back and watch, it's on YouTube. Go find the Star Tours what? Disneyland like opening day like press conference yeah because there's a press conference with Michael Eisner and George Lucas and they talk about why they're doing it and it's really cool and what's funny is George Lucas you know say what you will about him but the guy is I mean totally developed a lot of I mean yeah created had a mind for the thing. future yeah like he really could see the future yeah. and, with a lot of stuff and one of the things he says it's it's like 1985 or 6 or whatever I think it's before the ride opened yeah and he says you know what's great is that since it's film based uh, the the films can change any time, and we'll, maybe we will be able to even randomize even the even locations. back then. Yeah, like, I mean that didn't happen until 2011. But he but knew. He's still, still set because like, it's film based. You yeah, can change he it was up. he wasn't content. He's like, no, it should randomize. Yeah, I think that's so cool, and that's probably why he wanted all. They wanted to have all those posters. <laughs> back then, he probably had to change reels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, well, let me let me spill <laughs> this around. But how great! So anyway, why that that's a great little finisher to this. Go watch yeah. that press conference because you see them talk about it and kind of what came out of it and stuff like that uh you know so it's pretty cool but anyway i think that's pretty much it yeah. for star tours uh, i wanted to say real quick before we wrap everything up uh we went to today we went to the van eaton gallery oh yeah we went to the van eaton gallery uh uh in uh la or whatever Somewhere and uh every year about a couple times a year they do a big disney auction they get stuff from collectors and auction it off and it was really cool uh it's probably closed by the time you're seeing this yeah it might it might be open for a couple more days yeah uh, but they do them to, like twice a year, so keep an eye out on the van. Uh, you know, subscribe to like Van Eaton Gallery's like mailing list, and they'll tell you. But about twice a year, they do an auction, and whenever they do an auction, they put all the artifacts in their gallery, and you can go there for free. Yeah, and see, and see it it's all. Like a museum. Yeah, and I've been a few times. I mean, they have whole ride vehicles. They have the Autopia car. They yeah. have animatronics uh, left over. From animatronics rides left that over. Aren't even there anymore. Um, they have. This is a sticking point. They have. They have the original maquettes for Western River Expedition, which is uh, Mark Davis's grandiose follow-up to Pirates of the Caribbean. It's an unbuilt ride. It never happened. Yeah. It was super ambitious, and uh, that was its downfall because they, they, they like, couldn't fund it, basically. Yeah. And uh, the original character maquettes are up for auction, which is cool because you could go see them right now, but sad because they're not in a museum. Yeah. Like, somebody probably stole those from the archives. Yeah. Uh-oh. Fireworks are starting. This is about to get real loud. <laughs> we might want to wrap this up. Maybe. Anyway, check out the museum. Go to, go there if you can. And if you yeah. miss this, uh, they'll do another one, I'm sure, later in the fall or something. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. There's also D23 Expo that's happening. I'm sure they'll have an exhibit there, too. D23 is going to have a lot of old, crazy stuff. But yeah. also, Imagineering is going to be showing off a lot of the new stuff, like Star Wars Land and things like that. So that's going to be worth checking out. So anyway, check that stuff out. I think otherwise, awesome. that's I think it. That's any, it. any final words, nope, final thoughts? I think that's it. Well, we're gonna. I was about to say go on Star Tours, but we already we just we did. Just did. They just started the new Fast Pass thing today. Yeah. So they scanned our pass, and it was weird, weird but it's cool. It was cool. Yeah. There's our insightful commentary on that. <laughs> it was cool. Anyway, this has been another exciting episode of Creepy Old Crypt. Next month, I don't know what we should talk about next. I month. don't know. What the no, we'll not futuristic out. stuff. I think we should go back. Yeah. Somewhere in the past. I'm going to say it right now, an all-canoes episode. Okay. We're going to talk Davy Crockett canoes, and that's it. I do actually have a story about the canoes, yeah. where I almost died. Speaking of almost dying, <laughs> that's perfect. the end of it. All right, take care, everybody. Have a good... Wait, is it in the... It is in the shop. Oh, let's just right end there. it on yeah, that. Just All right, one. everybody. Here you go. This sucks. <laughs>